Hey, it's Paris from Epic Reviews. I'm going to be installing my new Vertex 4 solid state drive into my couple year old Asus laptop. Just got this, it's a 256 gigabyte capacity for a very good price of less than a dollar a gigabyte. In, in the system now, I have an Intel 320 from a couple years ago that I paid almost the same price for, for half the capacity. This drive's been good, uh, very reliable. That was the main thing that I wanted when I bought it. However, the 120 gigabytes with the two partitions, Windows 8 and Windows 7, and the utilities that I need and so forth, it's just, it's gotten too tight. So I'm going to put this in. Hopefully see some improvement in the speed. Not as much as in my desktop system, because to take full advantage of the speed with this, you need to have a SATA 3 connection, and the laptop, I think, is still sitting at SATA 1. But for uh, random access, I'm expecting to see it pick up, and hopefully it'll be just as reliable as what I have in here. So, I'm going to set this to the side, and about laptops, all computers in general, when you're going to work on an internal component, you want to make sure you've removed any source of power. So for a desktop, just pull the power cord out. For a laptop, of course, there's a battery, so you have an additional source of energy that you have to remove to make sure you don't short circuit something. Battery is usually locked in. you got to get your thing slid to the right position, and wiggle the battery out. And then also you want to make sure you're not carrying any static charge, especially if it's um, humidity happens to be particularly low. You could touch something inside that would cause damage to the computer. So if at all possible you want to touch something metal on the system itself without touching an internal component, the screws can be good, or the outside of the heat sink if you can reach that. Under the panel here is where the hard drive resides. This one's pretty straightforward. Let me zoom in a little here. It's just a couple screws and a plastic panel. Some of them are more involved. They, the panels can be up to half the size of the back of the laptop. Some of the trickier ones are where the, the, the panel for the hard drive is actually uh, overlapping the edge of the computer. And so you'll remove the screws, but there's a plastic panel that you have to slide up and then you can pull the hard drive out. And those are kind of tricky. But this one's pretty straightforward. You can use your finger or if, it's, if you've never opened it before, it may be sort of stuck. Pop up the panel with the screwdriver. And underneath, the hard drive's in this housing right here. It seats right here, the portion that you see with the gold contacts are what seat right here, and that's basically the key to attaching it. There aren't any further screws uh, holding this drive in because the screws that uh, go through the case actually hold it, so it won't slide around when you're moving the laptop. But other, other computers, they are different. So they give you this handy little flap here. You want to hold on to that. I put another hand on it to help with the pushing and pull it straight back until you can see the gold contacts here. So we're going to pull it straight back. There's the gold contacts. And then lift the housing out. And there's the old hard drive, the Intel drive. You can see it's the same, same size. They, did, they do make some of these solid state drives a little bit um, fatter and there have been issues with getting them to fit because this has to fit flush with the bottom and then the, the contacts have to slide right into the little slots made for them. So you can't have much variation or it doesn't work and that has been an issue but this one is the exact same size so it's not going to be a problem. So I need to take the four screws off of here to remove the housing and then put the other drive in its place and I'll do that and be right back. Okay, taking the four screws out and then it just the housing lifts right off. This is so much nicer than the, the old uh, parallel ATA drives where there was a, they had 40 pins here and there was a special piece <coughs> that had the pin holders on one side and then it had the gold contacts on the other and you had to be real careful. All you need to do is bend up one pin and it would, all would be lost. This one you just have to be careful you don't break off these contact tabs. In desktop system, you could do that because they've got the cable and you've got to wiggle it on and pulling it off. If you're not careful, you could snap the whole thing off and then you basically destroyed the drive. 
unless there's something very valuable on it and you want to spend a lot of money to send it off to a data recovery place to have, the, have it rebuilt. But you shouldn't have that problem with the laptop. Again, it's pretty straightforward. So here's the old drive. We can set that to the side. Got the new drive. And got to keep in mind the contacts, the larger one for power, the narrower one for data, and see that they're going to line up here. And then take the housing, set it over the drive. The screw holes should match up. Put those screws in and we'll be ready to insert the drive. Okay, got the housing attached here. Put the screws in snugly. Look at the contacts here. See where they're going to go in the drive. Put this down into the bay. And those will slide over, and that's where those other screws from the outside of the case are going to go through. This is all lined up. Pull on the tab, wiggle it a little so it looks like it's about ready to go, and then pull it forward until you don't see the gold contacts anymore. No gap there. And these screw holes look like they're lined up, so the drive is installed. Time to put the cover back on. And put these screws in, which again will go through the through the housing to hold that in place so the hard drive doesn't jiggle around and fall out of the place where the contacts are seated. Okay, <clears throat> put the battery back on now. Okay, so we'll start it up and see if it recognizes the drive. Of course, there's no operating system installed, so it's not going to go very far. The main thing is to see whether or not the computer is going to recognize the drive and be able to work with it. All right. Select, reboot, select proper boot device. Okay, it just can't find uh, anything to boot from. That's not a problem. Let's go into the BIOS screen. And if we look down here at IDE configuration, we do have, we're in, a, by the way, SATA mode enhanced. Your other option is compatible, but since we're using a, a fast SATA drive, we want that on enhanced. Port zero, it does list a hard disk. And there it is, OCZ Vertex 4, 256 gigabyte. So that's good. That means it looks like it is ready to work with it. One more place I can check here. Hard disk drives. Yep, there we go. So that all looks good. We should be able to put in the Windows 7 disk and it'll find this as a location to install to. We have to format it and See how long it takes to install Windows 7, how long to install Windows 8, and then how fast they boot up once they're actually installed. That's next.